Now that the Pixel 9 Pro Fold has been fully unveiled, there have been quite a few pieces of content put out by different people going over this device, sort of more in a broad view as it is not actually released and in people's hands to be reviewed. But in this video, I want to go over quite a few small little tidbits, little nuggets, things that you might have missed. Some are good, some are bad, some are things I just kind of want to squash and tell reviews are actually happening until reviewers have the device in their hands and i've organized all of these on a post on threads and we're going to go through them one at a time so the first one that i want to talk about is charging speed if we talk about the original pixel fold it was one of maybe my like biggest annoyances with that device it charged pretty doggone slow now strangely enough if you pull up the listing like what it's supposed to charge at it's supposed to charge at 21 watts i've talked about this on the channel in the past but when you actually charge your pixel fold it very rarely ever actually charged at 21 watts it was typically somewhere in the teens in the mid teens like 15 16 maybe 18 watts not 21 and because of that it would take you well over an hour and a half to fully charge that device. Now, if we look at the uh, Pixel 9 Pro Fold, it is meant to also charge at 21 watts. Now, it is also a slightly smaller battery going from 48, 21 milliamp hours down to 4650 uh, compared to the original model. So that will actually equate to if they truly charge at 21 watts and it's a smaller battery, it should charge faster than the original Pixel Fold. Think about having a smaller cup. You're pouring water in it at the same rate, but it's a smaller cup. It should charge a little bit faster. And also, if the thermals have been improved, I think that'll improve that charging rate as well. It is my opinion, and perhaps the, the opinion of many other people, that the thermals were probably what was causing the original Pixel Fold to not maintain that 21 watt rate. It would get a little bit warm and it would dial back the charging speed a little bit. Now look, the Pixel 9 Pro Fold is exceptionally thin. So hopefully they've kind of worked that out and it's able to dissipate its heat decently enough. Will it charge faster than the original Pixel Fold? We're gonna have to wait to find out, but in theory, it should, again, because the thermals should be better with a newer, more efficient chip. And of course, like I said, the battery is going to be a little bit smaller. Let me quickly point out here as well, I don't have like obviously super firm numbers. I'm not going to like review the battery life, but I have been told the battery life has been surprisingly good. I don't really know what more I can say because I haven't tested it, but just sort of keep that in the back of your mind. It might be better than you're thinking. Sticking with that sort of improved efficiency, improved thermals section, we have this article here on Android Authority talking about the fact that the Pixel 9 series of phones should have a brand new modem. They've been using the Exynos modem 5300 for a while, and they should be changing to the 5400. Apparently, this is a fairly substantial upgrade, 53 to the 5400 it should be more efficient it should be faster as you can see here i think it ends up being about 30 percent faster going from 10 up to 14.79 yeah so something in in that general vicinity in terms of the speed increase but the biggest thing satellite support also but the biggest thing is going to be the improvements to the efficiency if you've used a pixel device running tensor you know as well as i do that when you're on wi-fi the battery is one thing when you're on cellular in particular poor cellular reception, the battery absolutely drains a lot faster. So hopefully that modem is much more efficient and that lends itself to better battery life, better thermals, better pizza, Papa John's. And to sort of round out this topic of thermals in general, you may have seen this being passed around. Pixel 9 Pro XL, better luck next year. And it is purportedly showing a throttling test where the Pixel 9 Pro XL, after what would that be, just a couple of minutes, drops way down in performance. It loses half of its performance before recovering and then staying fairly stable. This is a 15 minute test. I'd argue you probably could have ended it somewhere around here because it had kind of stabilized. This is the main point. It lost half of its performance. And this of course is raising a lot of ire from a lot of people. I do want to point out that Ike's Tech Talk on Twitter pointed out that in the article that this was taken from, if you scroll down to the bottom and actually read the article, they talked about that a TSM fabricated four nanometer MediaTek chip 
lost 46% of its performance as well. So we're kind of in that same general ballpark, but I, I really have to push back on this even further. I found this application and I ran it myself. Here is my OnePlus Open. It only dropped to 83%. Okay, no question. Qualcomm chips are just the best going right now. Snapdragon chips are going to be better when it comes to thermals and throttling. But I grabbed my very own Pixel 8 Pro and I ran the very same test. And guess what? it dropped to 68% of my overall performance. So are we actually going to believe that the Pixel 9 Pro XL is significantly less efficient in terms of thermals and then therefore long-term uh, sustained performance compared to the Pixel 8 Pro? Is that what we're actually going to believe? That the 9 is significantly worse than the 8? I would say that no, you should not be believing that. What you should do is you should understand that these tests are being run on unreleased devices, very likely running incomplete software, unfinished software. They are not fully optimized, so take these tests with a grain of salt. I would expect that you're going to see something very similar to this, okay? It's going to be worse than Qualcomm chips, Snapdragon chips, in terms of sustained performance and thermals, but it is not going to be this, okay? So if you've seen this being passed around, don't believe it. You can download the app and run it on your own Pixel devices. It's not getting worse. That would be absolutely... Look, if it does get worse, then I guess I'll talk about it in my review, and I guess I'm going to have to really go hard on Google. But I would be shocked if that were actually the case. We have some more topics to cover, though, that aren't just related to charging and thermals. Let's talk about the camera, because there is a little tidbit here I'm kind of excited about with regard to the Pixel 9 Pro Fold. I've already talked about how these specs are not necessarily anything to write home about. They're not particularly impressive. We kind of, this is, by the way, the Pixel 9 Pro Fold on the left and then the original Pixel Fold on the right. They're very, very similar, right? So the zoom is staying the same. The primary is staying the same, but the ultra wide is changing. It's actually a slightly lower resolution, actually a slightly smaller sensor. Both of these things are bad, but it is a newer sensor, which in theory, should be good, so it's probably going to be very close to a wash, but look at this here. 127 degree field of view versus 121. Guys, that means the Pixel 9 Pro Fold has a very, very wide, wide angle. It's actually wider than the other Pixel 9s. It's wider than the Pixel 8s, and I am a big fan of this. So if you're going to go ultra wide, go ultra wide, okay? Don't give me something that's only a little bit wider than my standard lens. Really push the thing, and they're doing that, and I do appreciate that. Although flipping back now to a bit more negative of a topic, Google talked a lot at their event where they announced the Pixel 9 devices. They talked a lot about Video Boost and improvements coming to Video Boost. Unfortunately, according to Android Authority, we're going to pull up another article here, the Pixel 9 Pro Fold does not get all of these new improvements. Now, they are going to get most of them, but there are apparently two things that are missing. One of them, I think, actually makes sense and I'm not super shocked. Really, honestly, both of them make sense and I'm not super shocked by them, but they kind of play into my larger problems with the camera hardware. So the Pixel 9 Pro Fold does have most of these tweaks, such as HDR plus video, night sight video, and improved processing speed for video boost videos. Okay, so you take a video using video boost, it uploads it to a Google server, it's processed, and then it's sent back to you twice as fast this year. We all, we're going to get all of that stuff, but it misses out on 8K video boost and super res zoom video. So this is a thing where you shoot video in 4K, it upscales it using AI to 8K. I would imagine that the reason for that is because we are still using a sort of lower end 48 megapixel sensor. The other pixels have a much better primary sensor. I get why that's not going to happen. I wish we had a better sensor, then that wouldn't be a problem. The thing about the, what did they actually call it here? I don't remember. That's the wrong article. Super res zoom video. Again, we've only got a 10 and a half megapixel sensor for our zoom lens. So that's probably also the restricting factor there. Again, I get why it's not going to work. We should have better camera hardware though, right? So that's a reason, not an excuse. Flopping back the other way towards a positive thing. One of my favorite new features of the Pixel 8 devices, it's not just face unlock, guys. It is actually class 3 face unlock, which means if you are using a banking application, it can authenticate you into your banking application. Here's my banking app right here, and if I just stare into my camera, it has logged me in. That is super, super handy. It just means I don't have to look for my fingerprint scanner whenever I'm using the phone, and apparently... 
According to an article on Android Police this time, we are going to be getting Class 3 unlock on the Pixel 9 Pro Fold. Apparently, I would assume, based on some stuff I've heard, probably on the cover display and on the internal display, which will be really cool. I am working to independently confirm this one myself, so take this with a pinch of salt for now. If I get word that it is confirmed, I'll put it in like a pinned comment down below, but I believe that's how it's going to work. Confirmation, hopefully coming a bit later so if you're using your pixel 9 pro fold and you need to get into something that needs like proper authentication you won't be forced to only use your fingerprint scanner both cameras for the selfies should work just fine for that one more quick thing that i think has been speculated a lot it's been in the betas then out of the betas then back in the betas again it's app pairs we're gonna have this up and running with the pixel 9 series of phones most importantly the Pixel 9 Pro Fold. You can see a pair that I saved right above my weather widget here on my Pixel 8 Pro. If I click it, it's going to fire up both devices in a top-bottom split. Of course, on the Pro Fold, it's going to be a left-right split. This is a great little uh, multitasking productivity feature that is going to be there. Even though we're launching with Android 14, 15 coming shortly after, it should be there and it should be up and running from what I've been told. Again, anonymous source. It should be up and running. One thing that is missing, sadly, unfortunately, is floating windows. I do still think that there's a chance that it is tied in with this sort of desktop mode rework that they're working on, which is also not there at launch either. But again, app pairs are there. Floating windows are not. And the last one I want to talk about is sort of dealing with one of my biggest questions, one of my biggest concerns with the Pixel 9 Pro Fold as it changed from a wider than it is tall aspect ratio over to a taller than it is wide aspect ratio. Something that is much more akin to the OnePlus Open, almost square, but still taller than it is wide. And I can kind of demo this using my OnePlus Open. If I fire up my YouTube Music app, just as a quick example, and I pull up a track, what you'll see here is a layout that looks basically like the phone layout, but stretched out. If I rotate my device, and I don't know how this is going to work for the capture, it's being cut off a little bit, but you get the general idea, you get a dual panel layout. You get a tablet layout, and there are a ton, a ton of Google applications where that is the case, whether it's Keep or Tasks or Gmail or on and on and on and on, you get a tablet layout if your device is wider than it is tall. My concern was we're going to lose that with the Pixel 9 Pro Fold as it goes to a OnePlus Open style aspect ratio, but I am told via an anonymous source that this is being worked on. Now, it's not functioning like this on every app. They checked a couple for me. Keep was working. YouTube Music was working. Basically, when you open those apps up, even like this, they were still getting the dual panel layout. They did say that Gmail needed to rotate. Hopefully these apps all get updates very, very soon. Or maybe there's actually something in the system that is forcing this and Gmail's not quite working yet. Again, the device has not been officially released yet. So that is something that could be fixed. But it does seem like one of my biggest concerns for the Pixel 9 Pro Fold is at least somewhat being addressed. So guys, there you go, rapid fire as much as I could, a whole bunch of sort of maybe potentially slightly overlooked things about the Pixel 9 Pro Fold. Thanks for watching, subscribe for more content just like this, and until next time, stay nerdy, my friends.